Hey guys, this is Dr. Chaffin from SI. Just wanted to do a tip of the day, actually. This is gonna be a little longer of a tip, but this is about four, four key points that you have to know when you're doing full mouth reconstruction. If you don't know these four key points, you may wanna be careful on getting into full mouth rehabs, okay? The first point that, of a four key point is jaw position slash occlusion, okay? Those watching this video, definitely write that down. Jaw position occlusion. That's the first key factor when you're doing full mouth reconstruction. Now, why is that a factor? Okay, so when you bite together, you have a certain amount of, of interclusal space in the jaw position. So here's a bite wing. Patient bites together, you got the tab in between, right? When patients bite together, look how the destructive this occlusion is. But mind this so, when you bite together, you measure from here to here, and what do you get? That's the interclusal space for the whole arch in this bite position. Now, why is, why is jaw positioning a very one number one key point that I actually say that you have to have when getting into full mouth dentistry? Well, in my experience, I think that the weakest point of all four factors that we're gonna talk about today is this number one. Most people do not know how to reposition a jaw. They don't know what an interclusal space is. So if you're looking at a position, you're thinking about the patient's original bite position. That's what most general dentists think about. They don't think about first, is this position a good position? Do I need to change that position? If I need to change that position, that's where all, a lot of the general dentists are like, oh my God, I don't know how to do all that. So what happens is quality of workmanship around the country goes down. So we're in this position right here. Let's just do a little bit of measurement. So if I'm gonna measure this particular x-ray, and I hope you guys can see all this, I'm gonna measure when I extract that tooth, if I was gonna extract, how much distance? I've got 16 millimeters between both arches. That's eight up, eight down. Now, what, now why is that important? Well, if I extract the tooth, this is the amount of space I have in that arch. If I kept the tooth down. So even if I keep these teeth in rehab, now I take a grounded tooth and grind it down smaller. Or do I recognize the fact of, I might need jaw repositioning so I can actually get better crown work in because the interclusal space is really tight. You see what I'm saying? So how do you actually learn jaw positioning? Well, there's many different camps in the country. Go learn one, I don't really care. Uh, I have my own philosophies in that, but you definitely need to learn how to open somebody's bite, how to do it properly, how to get the patient very comfortable from a facial uh, pain joint perspective, as well as in a good happy place for good reconstructive uh, principles. So in this particular case, I would definitely open this bite to create room to build these teeth back up and probably the upper arch as well. This is just gives you an example of why jaw positioning is good. Now, when you're losing your teeth, and let's say this guy was losing all his teeth, which he's not in this case, wh why would that be important? Well, if you don't know how to jaw position, you recognize this patient right here and you're not gonna change the jaw position, then you're dealing with eight millimeters of space. Ooh, tight space. So let's go on to point number two. Point number two in full mouth rehab, the have to know guys, is a full understanding of prosthetic choices. And this kind of goes down to one, okay? So if I know jaw positioning, I, I know and I'm trained on how to reposition the jaw, which is also a way to correct room. If I take this patient here and I want more space, how do I do it? Two ways to correct inclusive space. Whack down bone, pull out teeth, create it manually, or reposition jaw to create it naturally. Take a pick. Most doctors I see don't know how to do the first of reposition it naturally. So they take the second, pulling teeth out, whacking down the bone, creating the space for whatever they need to fit in that area. Now, it doesn't even have to belong with implants. Full mouth recon is even doing a denture, guys. So if you have an immediate denture you're gonna do, bite is terrible, and you're like, oh my God, how are you gonna open the bite up? Same thing, jaw repositioning. So that's why I want you to start with that. Step two was the full understanding of prosthetics. Remember this, guys, every prosthetic has an interclusal space that it's gotta have to fit. So in this area here, if I'm doing a denture on this guy, what's a good, if I have eight millimeters or nine millimeters between both arches, what can fit in there? Well, a denture and locators needs what? I was watching the video, it needs nine millimeters of space to fit that prosthetic minimum. Can I fit that in here? Well, if I pulled the teeth, can I fit a hybrid in there? How much in inclusive space does a hybrid need? 17 to 22 millimeters. Can I fit a bridge in there? Yes, or if I'm gonna do a crown on this sucker, 
how much is a good crown? I can open this thing up, and there's ways to open and why things uh, are open the way they should. And once you're trained, you don't realize what I'm saying is true. So point one, learn jaw reposition. Pro uh, point two is learn your prosthetics. Not everything is a hammer. Everything's a hammer, everything's a nail, right? So you wanna learn bridges, you wanna learn hybrids, you wanna learn dentures, you wanna learn denture bars. You wanna learn cases like this where you can reposition and reconstruct with some crown and bridge and do, 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 do conservative dentistry. This is also a great case to be able to uh, know right off the bat. I see this time and time again. You don't, you have some mild bone loss here, but patient, you know, let's say this patient was gonna to go to one of those uh, full mouth rehab places that does only do hybrids. Well, how much room do you have to have for a hybrid cut? 17 to 20 millimeters per arch. So I'm gonna extract this tooth here, this molar, number three. And I'm gonna put a, well, how much space do I have? 9.8. So to fit a hybrid in there, I need 17 to 22. So I'm suddenly gonna grind all this bone down to here if I was gonna do that method. Wow. Now what's above here? Sinuses. The reason why I point out this is a really big uh, issue is I'm see we're seeing a lot of when people are thinking hybrids, the doctors are not getting a full quite understanding of inclusive space. And if they believe in the whole reduction of bone, they reduce this case like this. Suddenly you're not doing an all on four. Suddenly you're going in straight from teeth to straight up zygos or pterygoid implants. And now you've just made the case a lot more harder. I mean, a lot harder than you had to be. Um, and there's a lot of option that we can go through, but basically this, this tip of the video is to go through the four key principles. So remember, jaw position, full understanding of, of prosthetic choices. And the third one is what? I'm an implant guy, right? Implant proficiency, okay? Now, here's a case you guys can see. Now let's imagine this, this, is, this guy's not losing all his teeth, but this is a great example because I have teeth. Let's say these guys are busted up. <laughs> proficiency is being fast, perfect, and great at what you do. If you pulled all this guy's teeth and you wanted to even go to four implants and a denture, you don't really have time to have the guy in your chair for six hours. If you do, you're not very proficient at all. You should be able to get these teeth out in a very timely fashion. You should be able to put four implants in probably less than 40 minutes. If you don't know how, you're probably not very proficient. So step three is proficiency in speed. If you're getting into full mouth mastery, you've got to be proficient, which means you have to train. It is not like going to read a book on a crown prep and you start crown prepping, okay? So if you're going to get into the whole thing right now, big in the industry is full mouth recon. Three, full mouth recon is a very, very big field. That's a very broad. But most doctors watching this video will think full mouth reconstruction when I'm talking about is what? Hybrid dentistry. Uh-uh. Opening bites, saving teeth, reconstructing with crowns, maybe combination with implant, maybe doing a hybrid. Okay, we can talk about hybrids when they're good and when they're not great. The great prosthetic for the right candidates. When is bridge work? Why isn't bridge work done very much anymore? Some people will say, well, it's too expensive. Or they'll say, oh, oh, well, they just, quite frankly, don't know how to do it. That's the truth. Okay, so proficiency. If you're gonna be diagnosing, you better be fast enough to do a whole mouth at one shot. If you're not, you need more training. Okay, the fourth one is this, planning, designing, and temporization. So let's say I was to do a hybrid. Imagine in your head, the guy has shit bone. This guy doesn't have shit bone. But let's imagine this bone was down here, okay? And I was gonna do a hybrid. Okay, how do you got it? How do you, how do, you do it? You design it, you plan it out, CT, maybe get a guide, I don't mind guides, so you can be proficient and fast. When do you do Novell technique, when do you do straight, and also, how do you temporize it? The reason why I talk about planning and designing and temporization is because a lot of people don't know how to temporize. They get into the whole different world right now of analog and digital. I like both. I'm trained on both, but I know analog. I've had a lot of cases in the last couple of months where guys have gotten full digital, have zero training on analog. So they do the digital guy and they go through the workflow of the hybrid and they get themselves in trouble. Suddenly nothing fits and they don't know what to do. They all don't not really know how to do a lot of bite manipulation, so they basically will tell me that they trust the lab on the positioning. Nope, and as a surgeon getting into prosthodontics, you better know where the position is. You dictate where it needs to be, not your dang lab, okay? Otherwise you may have problems later. But digital is great, but you have gotta have that foundation of analog. 
So how do you take this and do a temporary denture? How do you do a conversion plate? This is old traditional. How do you load that sucker on the same day? Okay, once you know that, a conversion plate the old school way, then you can go into digital and be able to have both combinations because there's sometimes that digital doesn't work. Okay, or you get in there and you're like, oh God. Well, if you're trained on both, you're not handcuffed. It's kind of looking at learning guided implants without knowing how to go freehand. Then you're stuck if you get yourself in trouble. A lot of guys decide on taking a course and doing one or two implants, and then they just suddenly jump. So remember these four steps is that I talked about today as really important. And something I'm just going to make a last comment is, is interclusal space is really the, one of the biggest things, especially in cases that you're losing all the teeth. Okay. Always in full mouth if you're doing prep work, measure vertical dimension on all three sides, know what is supposed to be what it is now to protect yourself in your full mouth reconstruction. But when I look at these cases like this, if I was gonna pull this one tooth, guys, everybody watching this, what are you gonna do? Pull the tooth, do an implant, do a single crown, right? Well, what's changed if I pull the whole mouth? Assuming that that was big K and we needed to. Why would you, for one tooth, do a crown, but if I'm exploring, extracting all these teeth, you're gonna go into a hybrid. You guys see my point? With the crown, if I pull this, I have plenty of room, okay? I've got, let's measure that real quick. I've got about 10.2 millimeters of space. That's a big hole tooth. So if I'm gonna do a hybrid, I'm gonna take the tooth out, Go about right there, which is 18 and 17 right there. And let's just make it really easy for the guys that are watching. Okay. So let's see if I can do this. Everything below this red line, I have to remove. Like literally, I gotta pull the teeth, I gotta whack that bone down to fit this hybrid denture all on four in. Now, some guys don't wanna do that, I don't, I'm not, I'm, and I'm definitely one of them. I would rather put them into some bridge work because I'm trained for it, okay? So that's why in occlusal space, full understanding of prosthetic choices is very important when you get into full mouth. You have to justify everything we do. And in full mouth, remember this, four key points. What is number one? Jaw position slash occlusion. Know it, understand it, start there. Two, full understanding of prosthodontic choices. What are the interclusal space for each choice? What would you use it and why? Also make sure you're fast enough to be able to do those cases in crown prep and things like that for speed. Number three, implant proficiency. You gotta know how, you gotta be fast enough and proficient and that means training. And number four is plan, designing, and temporization. Know how to temporize your bridges. Know how to do screw and temp. Know how to temporize your hybrids. Know how to do a good version plate. Don't just trust digital workflow, PMA, printing, here to God, hope to God it works because somebody told you so. Go back to the old school to learn the new school. And if you're not trained, feel free to give me a call. I'll be happy to give you guys some advice, but there's a little tip of the day. Those are the four key points that you have to have to be a master at full mouth reconstruction. If you don't know them, go out and learn them. Don't skip steps. All right, guys, hopefully that was a, a, a decent tip for you guys. Have a great week.